It's the moment we've all been waiting for in the Aberdeen series. It's time for our Champions League debut. And we've got a new wonder kid that we've signed that hopefully can help us get a win. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome back to the Aberdeen series. Hope you're all doing very, very well. As mentioned, we've made a new sign-in, a pretty expensive one for our kind of budget, but I think he's definitely worth the investment. We've also got two games today, one of which is our first ever Champions League match, and it could potentially be quite winnable. I actually think the fixtures we've been given are quite favourable, but we'll talk all about that in a second. If you guys first, though, could hit that like button for me, as you have done throughout this whole series, all for support really helps and it helps YouTube know that people enjoy it they then share it out to more people and it's great and it really helps the channel and if you could subscribe if you haven't already that'll be awesome as we get close to 15,000 subscribers we might have already hit it when this goes out I'm not sure but if we have then thank you so so much thank you for even getting us this close anyway feel free to drop a comment down below I'll read them all and get back to them at some point even if it takes me a little while we've got a huge backlog to catch up on but I read all of them I really do appreciate it so thank you to everyone who does that but with that being said let's get into this episode shall we might be a little bit of a longer one who knows but first we're going to talk about our form so far and the fixtures we've got coming up so as you know we beat Hibs 2-1 in the first game of the season after that a 4-0 win against Ross County a 1-0 win against Kilmarnock we beat Rangers 1-0 also then we beat Livingston away 4-0 at that point since that first game we hadn't conceded a single goal we then played Kilmarnock again dominated them we beat them 2-1 and we were looking exceptional and now we have our first Champions League game where we're actually favourites and we are playing Luzerne. Now of course the Champions League at this stage is in the league phase so it's not the group stage that it normally is in real life. Once you get a couple years in it merges to the new format the Champions League will be having in a few years time but I actually half fancy our chances so we just need to finish fairly high in this table. We've got Luzerne as our first match then Salzburg, not awful, probably a game that we'll lose, but it's not a terrible game. Uh, Liverpool at home, obviously, is what it is. It's Liverpool. We're probably not going to win that. Antwerp could potentially be one where we pick up some points, but that is away from home. Feyenoord at home, we could maybe get something there. Buying away Napoli, they're going to be pretty tough. But there are some winnable games, but none more so than this Luzerne match. So we need to make sure we win it. We'll then play Dundee United with our rotation side afterwards. So you're being treated in today's episode. But let's get on to the players that we signed. I say players, it was a singular player that we bought in the transfer window. Let me show you him. Where is he? You can see here, by the way, we did loan out a bunch more players. We've got loads of people on loan this year in the hopes that just one or two of them can prove themselves and come into the team like Mason Hancock did a couple of years ago. But the man that we signed was transfer listed midfielder Kasper Kozlowski, a Polish 21 year old who was at Brighton when this save started. He had played a few times for them, was then transfer listed, was on loan at Rangers a few years ago and did very well. He's a very very highly regarded talent in real life. Only a few years ago, we had a Wolfsburg save on FM21 or 22. I can't remember now, but he was someone that basically led us to the Champions League in that save, played alongside June Bellingham. I'm not saying he's that good in this save, as you can tell, but he is still a very good talent and we've got him at a bargain transfer listed price of 4.2 mil. He's valued at around 12 million. So we've done well there. It does mean that somebody's going to miss out on a fair bit of game time in midfield. Maybe it's going to be Connor Barron. Who knows? Maybe Leighton Clarkson. We'll figure it out. Maybe even we start to see the end of Ross McCorry in an Aberdeen shirt because realistically at this stage, he is one of the worst in terms of ability, I think. So who knows what we'll do, but I definitely think Kozlowski was worth picking up. One of them where he came along, we just saw his price and I thought, you know what? We need to go for that. So we're in a very good position. Dev Senti, you'll see there's not really any first team candidates. And that's because, like I say, so many people out on loan this year. We're just hoping a few of them can perform well, as of course Mason Hancock did, like I mentioned, to prove to you what he did a few years ago. He went out to Partick Thistle, got a 7.46 average match rating. Since then, he's been our fourth third choice centre back and taken to our side very nicely. So we're delighted if we can get more players like that coming through. They don't have to be world class, they just need to be good enough to make it into our team. But now 
we have this Luzerne match. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's take a breather for a second and check out the team that we're going to use. It's going to be Neverstitch in goal with a back four of Fischer, Morrison, Caro, Saar, Sharon Dor in the midfield with Kozlowski, Guy Bua, Volomark, Pereira and Miofsky. That is because uh, a few of our players are injured. Estevez, fairly tired and Wilhelmsen is also out currently. So this is the team we're going for. Hopefully it will be enough to get us over the line. It's really hard to judge where we are against a team like Luzerne because they're not the kind of team that we play regularly. Um, but I'd like to think because we are favourites in the odds, we have a chance here. But Miofsky going to be taking the captain's armband. We're ready for the match. And I'm very excited to see how this might go. Our Champions League debut. Obviously, we've been in and around European football for the last few seasons. Of course, the Champions League, we're not expecting to actually win it or anything like that. Or probably even get to the knockout stages. We're just happy to be here. Every win's going to help financially. Even just being in the Champions League alone, we got £10 million or so very recently. So we just want to do the best we can, survive as long as we can in this Champions League, make as much money as we can, and who knows, maybe even give the fans something to cheer on along the way. Uh, we've just recently improved the stadium size, so you should be seeing more people in the stadium. Oh, never stitch. what have you done? Okay, he's been fouled. We're fine. I thought they'd scored then, but you should see our stadium looks bigger than before. It's been expanded. We're now also selling something like 50% more season tickets than last season. So clearly winning that league title has got the fans coming along. Remember, it wasn't too long ago when we'd have a game where half of our stadium would be empty. We don't really get that anymore. This Aberdeen side is on the way up. The facilities are being upgraded. The squad looks great. They're all young and ready to get better and to sell on for profit. So we're very, very happy with what we're doing here. Recently, we had a player that nearly got Sold, but here's Perea and he scores Oscar Perea the man that's probably the most talented player in the squad and has the most potential in the squad has made his mark in the Champions League he scores a brilliant goal takes the ball well and finishes very nicely this is going to be his season he knows the language now he's starting to learn the team a little bit more and he's starting to play very well as that inside forward on that left hand side a brilliant finish right into the corner exactly what we want and we are 1-0 up in the Champions League but I cannot remember for the life of me, what I was talking about a second ago. I've just had to pause it for a second, but I've remembered now it was about deadline day. And hold on a second, I'm going to have to stop myself again. There's another chance with Kozlowski trying to play the ball towards the back post. And it might actually be Luzerne counter-attacking unless Darnell Fisher can step in. And he has done. He finds Volomark. Back to Fisher. Fisher's going to go down the right-hand side and try and put a cross in. Miofsky's in the middle. Can't quite get there. He'll go again, though. We find Kozlowski. Scherendor. Nice ball over the top. It's going to fall out to Heldasar, who slides it across to Gangbua. Guy Bua just over the bar. But anyway, I'll try again. On deadline day, we had a first offer for a long time for one of our players in terms of a huge offer. And I say huge offer in terms of where we were at as a club because Wilhelmsen had a £15 million bid come in or £12 million, something like that. It was over £10 million, but not 20 I can't remember exactly what it was, but because it was deadline day, I decided to reject it. I think he'll be worth more in the future if he keeps up his scoring record that he's on. Um, so I've decided to hold on to him. But it does show that we are getting to that point where teams are taking an interest in our players and realizing much like Fabrizio Diaz a few years ago there is some real talent at this club and Guy Boer is somehow missed again he goes close there I say again his last chance wasn't really a chance in itself he did well to even get it close but that one definitely should have been a goal but it's been a good first half from us we look a better team with a one having all the chances um, and there's a few players maybe not playing great, but Oscar Pereira's bit of quality was all that we needed there to get that first goal. But it might be time that we make some changes in a few seconds. Free bookings to our back line. A few players not playing that great. We'll wait until the 60th and then we'll make the changes. But tactically, we are on top. It's going well. Um, and I think this is exactly how we'd want this game to go. I'd want a second goal though, because all it takes is Luzerne to score once out of their first chance. And we'll be very annoyed and miss out on a big opportunity to win in the Champions League. But here's Heldasar pushing for that second goal. He finds Miofsky and his header is just over and we'll use that as the opportunity to make some subs. Darnell Fisher is having a good game. Um, who maybe isn't though? I think Volomark should probably come off so we can get him rested a little bit. I'm going to bring on Ayan Ibrahimovic for Kasper Kozlowski. Heldasar can come off for Jack McKenzie. Jao Beso is still currently coming back from an injury, so I'm not really desperate to bring him on. I think Miofsky can come off for Duke. Actually, we've already done that, haven't we? Let's put Duke up front and then Bessuan in that inverted winger position on the right. Um, and I think we leave it as that. That will leave us one sub to use later on, should we need it, which I think we should probably hold on to. 
Um, but it has definitely been a good first Champions League game for us, no matter what happens now. We're dominating possession, dominating chances. Hopefully, we can secure the win with another goal. But if it ends 1-0, I won't be too annoyed at all. As long as we're getting points on that Champions League board, getting the money for winning the matches, we'll be happy with that. I think with 10 minutes to go, might be time to make the other substitution. I'm going to bring off Guy Bua for Ross McCorry. A bit of energy in that midfield to keep us going. We'll rotate the squad for the Dundee United match. So we just need a squad to get us over the line here. Neverstitch claims the corner well. For a second, I was worried it might be a Luzerne chance, but it's not. And Neverstitch is going to hopefully kick it out. I don't want him to bowl it. And he does. He kicks it long. It goes all the way towards Duke, but he can't win it. And now it will be Luzerne again going forward, who are building up some pressure late on here. First, they had a corner. Now they're going on the attack again. And there is space if they can get it to their man. Montiero's through. Never stitch. Big save. Big, big save from him there. I don't know how we let that guy through so easily. He must be very, very quick. Uh, but we've made it out alive. Still 1-0 up. Only a few minutes on the clock. Four minutes of added time. Not been massively convincing in terms of the amount of shots we've had on their goal. But overall, we are the team that deserves to win this. And it looks like we might have done it. And we have. We have won our first Champions League game 1-0 against Luzerne. Doesn't put me in that much hope that we'll win many of the others, but as long as we've got one result here, it's a good start. I'm very happy we got the result despite not being at our best, and that's what matters the most. We know we can do better, but we'll take the 1-0 win. Oscar Perea, Schoendor, all doing well, and we're sitting up there now with the likes of Man City, Bayern, Chelsea, Real. They're all looking up at us. Obviously, the next game, it wasn't Liverpool, was it? There was someone else we're playing before them. Uh, Salzburg. That might be potentially winnable, but away from home, maybe not. But that is awesome. 2.4 million pounds for winning a single match in the Champions League. If we can win a few more of them, it's like a whole player that we're going to be able to sign for our team every time that we win a match. And our finances are looking very healthy now with 13 million in the balance. There's also an argument that I should sell this sell-on clause for Fabrizio Diaz. Uh, we get 35% of any profit over 30 million. He's currently valued at around 40 million. So I'm just holding on to it for the sake of it for the time being. Um, but as long as he can play well for Sociedad, hopefully someone will come in and try and buy him. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll cash in that transfer clause at some point. We'll keep an eye on it. But very happy with this. We couldn't have done much better in our first game. Now let's get to that Dundee United match. Here's another thing that proves the club is on the up. We've just had a gate receipts record smash by £100,000 so that's awesome it seems the Champions League games attract all of the fans to the club um, but yeah let's get on to that match this is the team we're going to go for for the new firm derby it's going to be never stitch in goal yet again Estevez, Caro, Hancock and McKenzie is our defensive line Clarkson, Ibrahimovic and Connor Barron with a forward line of Duke, Wilson Odebart and Vincente Bissouin if you don't remember Wilson Odebart he was someone that we signed uh, in this transfer window seven hundred. £50,000 from Troy's. Looks like he could be a good player, but hasn't worked out for him just yet. I think he needs some time to settle in and then hopefully we'll see him flying. You know what? I might even go Ryan Duncan up top. I've actually decided I'm going to go Ryan Duncan on the right instead of Bissouin just because it's not really his role. He won't know it very well. So we'll put him there and we'll make sure Helder Sars on the bench and then we'll go for that. And I'll make sure Bissouin gets a lot of game time otherwise because I don't want to cause any complaints. That's one thing I am worried about at the minute. We've got a good squad, but a big squad. I say a big squad. It's two players competing for every position, which is what you'd expect. But there's some players from the old regime who are expecting to be pretty big influences on the squad who are maybe only good enough to be squad players now um, and we need to make sure we don't cause too much upset because of that but so far so good I'm just hoping that this team is still good enough to get over the line here and here's Conor Barron 13 minutes in with the corner we don't get anybody's head on it but Ibrahimovic picks a ball straight back up he's going to drive a ball back in it goes right the way through no one gets on it just yet and it's going to come out to Ryan Duncan who brings it down crosses to Duke who heads it onto the post maybe he was offside maybe not but either way a very good start and we're piling on the pressure to Dundee United my big worry here would be that we don't ever get that first goal I feel like if we do and um, we'll be fine from there but Dundee United you know how it is in a rivalry game anything can happen and I just want to know that with this attack that's definitely a rotated attack and probably one of the weakest forward lines we could have fielded I just hope that's still enough to get over the line against a team like them. I think it should be. I think all three of the players we've got in attack would probably start for them anyway. Um, but we'll see how we get on. Here's Ryan Duncan to Duke. Ibrahimovic, good football. Odebert probably comes back a bit too far there. But then, oh my word, what a strike that was. He very nearly scored from absolutely nothing there. 
very, very close from Odeba. I think it was him anyway. That would have been an unreal goal to start his Aberdeen account up with. Uh, but so far, 30 minutes in, possession is in our favour. Chances are fairly equal in terms of XG, but highlights-wise, it does seem to be all us. We just need to get that ball in the back of the net. And here is Duke to try and do exactly that. What a fantastic goal that was from Duke. We don't use him as much as we used to, but whenever we use him, you can rely on that man for a bit of quality. And I've always said it, he's physically very good, but technically, he shouldn't have this kind of ability, but he does. He dribbled past people there, gets to the byline, and then just dinks it over the goalkeeper the way that Lionel Messi would or something like that. He is just unreal. Brilliant run, brilliant chip. That gives us a 1-0 advantage, and that is perfect for what we're looking to do in this game. Just grind out a result with a rotation side. We're in so many competitions this year that we're going to have to do it on a few occasions to use a rotation team in the league, but still hopefully get wins. Mason Hancock having a good game, as is Andres Caro, who, by the way, if we go to our club info screen, I don't know why I'm doing this mid-match, but I just want to show you. Um, it says the favoured personnel down here. Not sure if you can see it, but none of our players that we have currently are legends or icons. But saying that, Andres Caro is the only player from this whole save who's made it onto the favoured personnel list. He's actually up there. He's only 21 as well, so hopefully over time he can become more of a favourite here at Aberdeen. But we are also on the favoured personnel list but still behind Andres Caro which seems stupid the guy probably plays half a season a year this year though we're relying on him a lot more and he's certainly doing the job for us um, but yes half time has passed we're doing well a second goal would be lovely but if we have to grind out a 1-0 I won't mind too much here's Connor Barron to Ian Ibrahimovic Ryan Duncan Ian Ibrahimovic obviously a very good player but he now has Kozlovski to compete with in that Mezala role so we'll see who can come out on top but it's a brilliant battle between two very strong young players who easily will both go on either be legends for us or we get sold on for £20 million each. I, I think they're both that good. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But there's Clarkson to Ibrahimovic. Ryan Duncan, chip ball over the top. Duke is in. And, oh, he smashes the bar. Odebert! Oh, he hits the post. I thought he might get his first goal. He needs that for his confidence, he does, Odebert. And it very nearly went in for him. But not just yet. Here he is again, though. Back post, plays it across. Ibrahimovic, Ryan Duncan. And the goalkeeper now claims it for Dundee United. But that was very close to being a goal for a few people then. Both tight angles to get in. Oh, but come on, don't let them score from a corner. Here they go. Kujo is going to play it in. He puts the cross in. Duke rises to it first, but it goes straight back out to him. He's going to take a shot, isn't he? He does. It deflects. We head it away. Not far enough. It's going to come back from Dundee United. They didn't have many chances yet, but maybe all they need is one to score. Darnell Fisher, sorry, Estevez is up there. He heads it away onto Kingsley for Dundee United. Cross comes in, Nevisic claims it, and it might actually be a highlight for us. We might be about to turn it the other way in hopes of getting that second goal at the start of the second half. We look like we want it. We've had a few chances already. Can we do it? It's Duke running through. He shows his pace. He shows his strength. He shows his control and he puts it away. This man is unreal up front. Considering he's our third choice striker as well, it's nuts the things that he can do. Ibrahimovic, great ball through to him. And once Duke's running at goal like that, you just know he's going to do something. I just knew that he was going to outpace the defender. Whether he scores is a different question with him, but if he can get ahead like that, there's nothing a defender can do to stop him. Pace and strength, he's exactly what you'd want. 55 minutes in, let's take Odebert off. He's had his chance to score. He didn't do it. Let's make sure Vinny Basuan is getting some game time out there. Um, and other than that, I think we'll probably leave it as is. I don't really want to get anyone else tired or injured in a game where they don't need to come on. We'll let the rotation players deal with it and just, you know, make a few subs in the eights here for something. But here's Jack McKenzie, hits it over the bar, goes close, but not close enough. 60 minutes in, still 2-0 to us. We're looking like the better team. We just need to make sure we don't give them any stupid goals to get back into this game. Chalmers plays a cross in. Andres Caro heads it away. Only as far as Mikison. What a name that is. Uh, here is Chalmers again. Oh, we've given him so much room there to shoot. We may as well have just asked him to score. I think it does deflect on the way through. I'm pretty sure it had a huge deflection. Uh, but either way, I don't know why we weren't closing him down at that point. Particularly when it comes out to him. Wait for it. Here. Why is nobody charging out? No one does. We just give him the space to take the shot. And it cannons off. I think that's maybe Mason Hancock. I can't really tell from there. Uh, but either way, not the best way to give him a goal. We've let them have that. 
and now they've got a chance to get back into the game. So I'd love a third now just to seal the win and also so you guys can see some more goals from our team. And it is McKenzie who's going to try and lead the charge. He finds Ibrahimovic, Ryan Duncan over to Duke. Once again, he shows that pace. He gets in behind, but it's his finishing ability that he lacks and he's hit that right at the goalkeeper. But once you play them long balls over, he feeds off of that, does Duke. Connor Barron going to play the corner in in the 65th minute. Over it comes. Can we get ahead to it? No, we can't. Wickens claims, uh, and it's still 2-1 to us. Looking comfortable, even at this stage, with it being 2-1 now. Um, but there's highlight after highlight in this half. Clearly, we're after that third goal because we've just been trying to score constantly. And here's Connor Barron. He's through, and he hits it just wide of the goal. Looks like he sliced it a little bit there. And, and I kind of just want to see the game out now. No more highlights. Let's just have an easy day at the office. 77 minutes gone. We are going to bring on Ross McCorey yet again. I'm also going to get Guy Buer on. We'll bring him on for, I think, Ian Ibrahimovic. Andres Caro will bring off the Beso, get some fitness back into his legs. And other than that, I'm pretty happy just to see it here. Maybe we do this and give Estevez a little bit of a break. And I think we'll leave it at that. Just do those subs, hopefully see the game out. No one will get injured, I hope. Fingers crossed, touch wood. Um, and we should just win 2-1, nice and comfortable. Don't give them any extra opportunities. How we've ended up with 1.55 XG is beyond me. I feel like that should be three or four minimum the way we've played this game, but it's been the Duke show. It's been the Ryan Duncan show and Mason Hancock as well, doing very well for us. We win 2-1, it's another three points. We haven't dropped any points in the league just yet. A good performance from the whole team. Would have been nice for Wilson Edbert to get a goal there, but he hit the crossbar and the post. And after six games now, we are on 18 points. Celtic are still keeping up with us, if not doing better with their goal difference. But you can see the clear divide already starting to form between Celticers and the rest of the league. We are just miles apart from everybody else. And it's really just a battle between us two yet again. Here you can see lots of our loan players out on loan doing very well. Good performances, playing fairly well. Lots of these players being key players for their sides. We'll praise Duke's performance. And now we have got plenty of games to play before you next see us. You'll see I've got loads to do here. And I'll probably bring it back for one of the later games in the Champions League. Maybe even after the January transfer window. Do I want to go that many games? I'm not sure. We'll see. I'll see when I bring it back, but hopefully with a few more updates, lots of matches to play. Hopefully you'll see a lot more wins appear in here in this results section, but we'll see how we get on. If you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button for me, subscribe for more. Thank you for all your support on the channel. I really do mean it. When we hit 15k on the channel, I will take a minute just to talk about things a little bit, but yeah, you're all awesome. Thanks for the support. Let's keep it going and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>